Recently I got asked a lot here on YouTube about how I color my videos and whether I could do a video about that. So here we go, today I'm going to show you my basic workflow and how I color grade my Sony footage. By the way, if you're new to the channel, my name is Tom Streller, I'm a filmmaker and on this channel I cover everything filmmaking related. So if you're into this, make sure to subscribe to not miss any upcoming videos. I guarantee you won't regret it. So the most important thing about my coloring workflow is actually the picture profile. Because even though most of you think I use an S-Log profile, I actually don't. On pretty much all my videos I use the Cine 4 picture profile and there's a good reason for that. I personally love this picture profile just because it gives me more dynamic range than the standard picture profile, but is way easier and faster to process and post than S-Log. But don't get me wrong here, a log profile is great to have if you really need it and if you actually know how to work with it. But in really fast shooting situations like weddings, travel videos or concerts, there's not a lot of time to always think about how to properly expose on lock. So in my opinion, Cine 4 is just a good balance. It gives you more dynamic range and flexibility with the color grading, but it's just way easier to edit and faster to film with. And it helps me to get the look I'm aiming for. I also don't change any internal settings of the profile in my camera to get the cleanest image possible out of it. And I highly recommend you also don't do that because this easily can add noise or strange artifacts to your footage. The best thing is to not mess with these settings like saturation and contrast and do all of this in post. The last important thing before we head into the actual creating process is the white balance. You definitely need to get this right in camera. Of course you can fix it in post a little bit, but if your white balance is totally off while shooting, you're screwed. So always choose manual white balance and try to always remember that when your lighting changes like from sunny to cloudy, you need to change your white balance too. An incorrect white balance has been the main reason why some of my earlier footage turned out pretty strange and it took me quite a while to realize that I just need to put more attention to the white balance settings. So always check your white balance and don't ever use auto white balance. There's nothing harder to fix in post than shifting white balance throughout shot. But now let's say we got our shots so we can head over to Premiere Pro, which is my editing program of choice. But of course you can do the same things in Final Cut X or DaVinci Resolve 2. So we imported our footage, drag it onto the timeline and the first thing I always do is to create a new adjustment layer. Because we don't want to grade our clips one by one, but we want to apply a certain look to the adjustment layer to affect a whole section. Then drag the adjustment layer above your footage and head into the Lumetri color panel, which is Premiere Pro's coloring effect. There the first thing I do is to apply a LUT in the creative tab. And this is one of the key parts to my coloring workflow. Even though some people say that using LUTs is an amateur way of coloring, I personally don't think so. I created a lot of LUTs myself over the last year for a lot of different moods and looks and they are a key part to what I consider my personal style. So using these LUTs in my workflow just makes all of this a lot easier and faster and I just prefer to work fast and efficient instead of creating similar looks and gradings over and over again. So for these shots I definitely want to have something warm and colorful but not too crazy. So I will go with the basic LUT from my recent cinematic LUT pack for Sony footage and as you can see it instantly creates a certain natural look. I usually turn it down to 50% to make the look a bit more subtle, but if you're shooting in lock you can set the amount a bit higher. You could also add a little fade to the LUT in here if you want or change certain settings like temperature or tint, but for now I will leave all of this to default and head into each clip to adjust them and make all of them look similar. Because besides choosing a certain look for your footage, color correcting is actually a really important part of the workflow. Because to make your video look professional, you want all of your shots to have a similar look to them. So after you set the look in your adjustment layer, 
go through your shots and choose the best one of them as the hero shot. This will be your reference when you go back and forth between all your shots and check whether they all look coherent. So now, even if it's pretty time consuming, start with the first one in the timeline and go all the way through all of your shots and check the look of them with the LUT applied. Then if needed, make the adjustments to correct them and check back with your hero shot so your entire sequence has a coherent look. For me it's really important to already know which LUT I'm going to use because otherwise you can end up doing the whole correction again after you applied the LUT because this can change the look of your entire sequence again. After you're done with the correction it's good to check the look of your overall sequence again and see whether you want to add some more adjustments. So let's just add a little bit of contrast here and maybe a minimal fade to make the blacks in the video stand out a bit compared to the black of the letterbox. And that's pretty much it. This is how I usually color grade my videos. Of course you can do everything the LUT does manually in the Lumetri panels, but it's just way more time consuming and this is why my personal workflow heavily relies on my own LUTs. If you have any further questions don't hesitate to leave them down in the comments and also let me know if you want me to further explain how I create my own LUTs and maybe I can do a video about that too. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more filmmaking related videos like this one and I hope to see you guys in the next video.